Okay, thanks so much for staying there for us. Let's start a conversation with the finder. Negotiators opposed rescue of kidnapped Canadian girls fearing their death. That's a story. But Ghana made it uh, thanks to CCTV uh, footage and uh, strategy used by uh, uh, security uh, apparatus. That's uh, the story. The publisher says that uh, boy four kidnapped. Nigerian grabbed at Mamobi. Another uh, kidnap story uh, there. If you take a look at the daily graphic this morning, Barbados request 375 Ghanaian nurses. President accept in principle. That's a story. 2,000 petitioned parliament over uh, tardy girls. And we're told this morning that more teachers have passed the licensure exams. Good news. Daily guide, 375 nurses for Barbados. Uh, the president has uh, uh, agreed in principle, but yet to uh, put pen to paper. That's the story. An auditor general acknowledges government support. The Times says seven die, 48 injured in Krobo Dumasi accident. Uh, we're told of the VRA vehicle that got... Um, into that accident and uh, the Ghana nurses story is there captured by the times and of course you won't miss this one EC begins limited voters registration today uh, wherever you are across the country if you're not registered you need to uh, take a look at uh, that you can find them uh, around where you live Pokwasi interchange were told redesigned into four tier those are some of the stories on the front page of the Guardian uh, Times. My guest to do the talking is Chief Executive of Maslock, a member of the NPP, uh, Mr. Sibna Moa is here. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Hope your weekend was great. Uh, yes, but very tiring. Mm. Mm, by the grace of God, it was okay. okay. Great for your time with us. An aspiring MP for Tamale Central, a member of the NDC, a former Deputy Minister. Comrade Ibrahim Mutala Mohammed is also here. Good morning, too. Good morning. I hope you're doing great. Inshallah. The weekend was fine. Mm. You can't complain. I was in the north. I came back from mm. Tamale yesterday. Mm. But it was good. Welcome and grateful for your time with us in the studio. And uh, we, I, I, I almost missed this one, but I guess we need to talk about it because um, wherever you are across the country, if you are uh, just you just turned 18 or for one reason or the other, uh, you could not register um, for, to vote as. Uh, uh, an electorate, there's opportunity here because today the Ghanaian Times is reporting that the Electoral Commission will begin a limited voters registration exercise nationwide. And uh, this is re registered Ghanaians who, are, who have turned 18 since the last exercise, as well as those who, for one reason or the other, could not do so. It formed part of the Commission's preparation towards the conduct of the 2019 district level election. And don't forget that MMDCs are to be elected the, on December 10, 2019. Uh, we're told that it was originally uh, scheduled for June 7. It had to be postponed uh, following an injunction application filed by a Ghanaian. Uh, so a statement signed by the chairperson, uh, we're told that uh, from today to July 7, we'll all get the opportunity to do that. It, it will take place in all district offices of the commission and designated electoral areas as well as centers throughout the country from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. each day. It will include weekends. That information we're getting or we have. So if you go there, you can go with a Ghanaian passport, a valid driver's license, a national ID card, and an old biometric voter's ID uh, for those who registered before the 2020 voters exercise. That's the story so far. But that's number one. Let me start a conversation with you. So, we, of course, the EC is on cause. Uh, it was a court issue, but today, at least it's been cleared and we are <coughs> starting. We can say that gradually we are building up to um, um, 2020. But the issue has to do with where the exercise is taking place. Now, we know district offices and some designated uh, areas. It, is this a fair opportunity for those who have not registered to do so? Um, my <coughs> regards to our viewers this mm. very morning, and we give thanks to God that at least we are all alive right. uh, peacefully. Um, I think this issue 
um, much controversy has been uh, given rise to because of this issue um, among key stakeholders, particularly political parties, um, NDC, MPP, and others, and even some of the media guys waved in, and it went to court. And the fact that court of competent jurisdiction has ruled in favor of the EC's position, I think the question of is it fair, is it not fair, is this, in my opinion, uh, we don't have to, I don't see the point in dragging issues and I, I think we need to rather shift to, in my opinion, mm. more other issues because um, this is the decision taken by the EC. Mm. There's something called asymmetric information management. <laughs> Sometimes, sorry, there could be a piece of information that <clears throat> stakeholders, other stakeholders might have thought, oh, we think, in our view, this should be the case. This is the best thing. But they are, they are not previewed to other internal pieces of information that probably if they might have been previewed to, mm. they would have changed their position as to whether to oppose or support. Right. So the EC rather has the right to manage its exercises efficiently, effectively. And the EC said that, look, this is the best way of doing this at this particular point in time. Because um, information reaching me, which I cannot really confirm, because I've not been following this whole thing mm. critically, is that very soon they are going to do the national one. National one, if that is true. I'm not 100% sure. Mm. And if very soon they are going to do, they actually had to consider cost and other logistics issues. Not that they don't have logistics or they have it, but probably with respect to this exercise they are going to do shortly for the assembly, isn't it? This is for just the assembly. The EC thought it wise that this is the best alternative that they should take. Right, mind you, every decision is geared towards an objective or a goal. And there are always alternatives. For instance, I want to go to Kumasi. I can go by land, by air. I can even walk by foot. Or if there is sea connection, by sea. They will all get you there. But which are the alternatives? Will be best or suit that goal or objective. Of course, you as a standard to government have thought, hey, why not going by air? That is the fastest way. But those who are in the helm of affairs might have had information about weather that you don't know, mm. might have had information about land that you might not know. So once they are the internal stakeholders, why can't we give the youth the benefit of the doubt? In any case, I was the regional organizer of MPP the last election. And trust me, um, most of the rail registration we did, to the best of my knowledge, were even done at the regional office, EC's office. And both MPP and NDC were encouraging and even buzzing people. This is a fact. I wouldn't say they were buzzing strangers, but because of the distance. You can call any EC. I don't know other regions, but you can call Ashanti region, and I don't think they would do that in isolation. So it's not like something that is being done new and that people are raising issues, except that sometimes I get a bit worried, I get astonished that people cannot, either intentionally they are pretending they don't know this thing happened or was happening or has happened before, or they have forgotten. Because it happened in Ashanti region, I think other regions too that the regional offices, they were doing this uh, type of registration. Mm. And people were going to register there with NDC supporters and MPP supporters with their whatever groups and, you know, even at a point in time, they had the uh, police and the army because of the crowd and other things. So what I'm saying is that it's done before and was done successfully. And that one, nobody complained. So why people are complaining now? Let's try to rather support the EC, and especially when court of competent jurisdiction has ruled the case, I think we should let the matter lie, mm. so that we don't, and in my opinion, unnecessarily raise other debate and argument that may tarnish the image and the reputation of the entire EC limited registration exercise. I think we should be very, very careful. And I also use this opportunity mm. to ask my people in Inshaeso to really go and register massively and those in Ashanti region all over Ghana 
they have to go and register massively to make sure that they are not disenfranchised. But as I am saying, they should make sure that it's done in peace, in tranquility. It's a national exercise. It's not an, an exercise to antagonize each other, mm. but an exercise to ensure our commit commitment to building this country and this society of ours. They should have uh, ID, national ID cards, passport, driving licenses. If not, two people who are already in the register or have registered can guarantee they can do maximum five. And I'm telling them, nobody should go there and put up any antisocial behaviors because the security agencies are properly put in place. And they wouldn't want anybody to put up any scuzzy or aberrant behaviors that will mar the exercises. And they should know, if you register to, your name will be deleted. So if you want to replace your card, it's not an opportunity for you to go and re-register. Go to the EC's office for replacement of your card. And I think... For once, Ghana should have exercise that will be, will be, will be trouble-free, mm -hmm. that we can all really have our peace and go about our daily businesses mm -hmm. and duties as usual. That's all that I can say. Grateful. Come in. So he, he, he thinks that we should go beyond looking at whether a, a voters or eligible voters can get the opportunity to register, but rather talk about how to make their exercise oh, well. Please. Uh, and Please, so, boss, I didn't say that. Sometimes people say I argue. Did I say that we should go beyond eligible voters to register? Is that what I said? You, you, you said Please, that. Please, I beg you. Said, right. Stephen, I never you, said that. You allow me to put my question. Oh, God. What you said is that, <laughs> what you said is that <laughs> we should not talk about whether it is fair for people to be able I never to said that. Or not. Please, okay. if you want me to repeat, I'll repeat what I said. So, I, I ask I you repeat? a question. Is it fair? Is it a fair opportunity for people who have turned 18 and who could not register to do it? You didn't answer it's that fair. question? Okay. Well, no, it's so, fair. So, so that Very is what fair. I'm saying. So, so the opportunity is provided for them to do it. Yeah, so, so that is what I'm saying. So I'm, I haven't said we should go beyond Okay. That. You, were, you were saying that's that okay. people raised issues about that. You raised an issue like, mm. like not you, but the public, controversial mm. And I said that once the court of competent jurisdiction has ruled, and it's not the first time this is happening, the previous election, I was a regional organizer. And grateful. we did it in the region. So it, why can't we go? It, grateful. And they might have also yes, had information Stephen, and we grateful. don't have. I'm grateful. So here, I beg you, don't miss go to Come here. So his assertion is that it is, a, it is fair for people to, to <laughs> register. What do you think? Well, let me say good morning to my good friend, Stephen. Myself and he. I'm have not your friend, I'm your brother. <laughs> <laughs> let me say good morning to my brother, Stephen. Uh -huh. yes, and of course, your good something. self and your you know, your cherished viewers. And permit me also to say good morning to the people of Tamale and Tamale Central in particular. And use this opportunity also, just like my brother did, to urge them to do as much as possible to ensure with all the difficulties and the economic challenges that have indeed bedeviled all of us, that we would have to struggle to move from one place to another to get engaged in an electoral process that is supposed to be respected by law and the electoral commission itself. I know how times are difficult and I know how difficult it is considering the fact that these electoral offices, the district offices are located in the district capitals and considering the distances that people would have to travel to get engaged or participate in this. He himself, my brother, in his assessment said last year there were some difficulty under which even security agencies had to move in because of the crowd, you know, because oh. people. Yeah, you said that. I was talking about stakeholders that came around and I said the police and the army, they came. No, you in said they case, had to even move in because boss, of the crowd. In any case, can I, can I, can I, can I, if you can, if you can, I'm not if we can allow him to go on, I think you can allow him to come back. It's a healthy thing. No, I will allow you to, if you want to come back, I'll give you Well, I think that the people listen. You said that the crowd, in fact, you use this word specifically. Yes, when people had to move to the region. I was talking about stakeholders. In any case, it is not true that this isn't the first time we are having this registration done at the district offices. This is the first time. So it is absolutely okay. false to say that this thing happened last year. In fact, if you listen to the political parties, please, 
I'm saying that this is the first time we are having these elections. At district offices? Yes, this is the first time. It has never happened. And if, at the regional yes, offices? Yes, it is the... Oh, I'm saying that this is the... It's not only the regional offices. Even district offices, that is what the Electoral Commission has indicated. And, and I'm saying that this is yes. the first time that we are having this limited registration being done or restricted only to district offices and regional offices. We have never had that. So to say that you were a regional, you know, okay, organizer yes. and this thing happened, that is absolutely false. No, it's true. And I will challenge your producers to mm, find out as we yes. proceed on this program. It's it is also, true. it is also, can I make my points? I beg you are listening. Okay, if you have issues, number, yes, you know yeah, that. I, so. I come yeah, to you. I beg, this I come one, to I'm a fault. I, I know okay. my brother. Uh, it is also it is also not true that the, the, the court has ruled on the substantive matter. That is absolutely false. Okay. The court it was has actually ruled on the injunction. Yeah, okay, so right. to say that, so, please, to say that the court has ruled on the matter and therefore people should go ahead with it without raising issues is absolutely false. The court actually ruled on the injunction. The, the people went to court on the decision to have this exercise done at district offices and not polling stations as it has been done over the years. This, is, this was the reason why the people went to court. However, the Electoral Commission was bent on going ahead with the exercise. They therefore sought an injunction of the court to stop the Electoral, please, to stop the electoral Commission from going ahead. That, that, that is completely different from the issue of having these exercises done at the district office. So when you say that the, spring, the, sorry, the court has ruled on the matter and therefore we should forget of it and go ahead, please. That's what we're discussing. Suvama, you lie. But if you misquote me, I'm not misquoting you. I'm exposing the falsehood to react. As a matter of fact, I'm not misquoting him. I'm not misquoting him. No, take me to. I beg you. I'm not misquoting him. I'm exposing the falsehood on national television. So that that's your opinion. Please, it's not an opinion. You just peddle the falsehood. It is not true that the ruling was on the substantive matter. It was just on the injunction. The, injunction. the people didn't go to court matter. on injunction initially. They went to court on a substantive matter to stop the Electoral Commission from going ahead to have this exercise done, restricted to district and regional offices. This was the issue. However, the Electoral Commission indicated they were going to go ahead. So they sought the injunction to stop the Electoral Commission from going ahead. That is what what was ruled on. Now, the, the speed, the alacrity with which the Electoral Commission is bent on going ahead with this, immediately after the ruling indicated that they are going to have it done on, or to have it started on Monday. That is why we, all of us, would have to urge our people to go ahead and participate in it whilst the court looks at the substantive matter. And I have no doubt in the independence of the judiciary. I have no doubt that the court will do the needful because clearly the Electoral Commission went in for an approval by Parliament. And in that approval, the Electoral Commission, the approval was meant to have this exercise done in all polling stations as it has been done over the years. So if Parliament approved such and such amount of money for the exercise, why would the Electoral Commission bend on having this thing restricted restricted to district and regional offices. And in any case, don't tell us that the Electoral Commission should be allowed to go ahead with what they want to do, and by your assertion, they may be privy to some information that we do not have. Let's get serious in this country. All stakeholders in our political, the political parties, and even those who are not political parties, we have all a collective responsibility to ensure that we engage in an electoral process that is free, fair, you know, devoid of any suspicion, because that ensures the stability and the peace of this country. Many countries in Africa and across the globe, we have had turmoil as a result of electoral disputes. And I think that this electoral commissioner is behaving absolutely recklessly. And for a reason that, is, yes, absolutely reckless. <laughs> absolutely reckless because he, she ought to listen to various stakeholders. She ought to listen. Look, the framers of the constitution and even acts establishing the electoral commission were conscious of the fact that you don't have a carte blanche, an absolute authority to do what pleases you <coughs> as electoral commission. You do so with the understanding of various political parties. That part is not for nothing. It is to ensure that people build consensus. It is to ensure that despite the fact that there are some constitutional and legal you know, provisions giving you that autonomy as electoral commission, but it must not be used arbitrarily. You must do that in conjunction with the various stakeholders, in this case, the political parties. 
Mind you, it is not only the NDC who have raised issues about the conduct of the Electoral Commission and the Commissioner with regards to this exercise. Other civil society groups and other political parties and those who do not even get engaged in our political discourse in this country have all raised issues about the conduct of the Electoral Commission in this matter. Look, it is not, there is no denying the fact that district capitals, and you do know very well as a former regional party organizer, that there are distances that people would have to move to get to the district offices to register. Now the question is, if there was an approval, and the approval was done in, in line with the various polling stations that are going to supervise the, conduct, the conduction of of the of the registration process. Why would the electoral commission desperately want to restrict it to only district and regional offices? Now, why must people be denied the right to engage in an electoral process because they may not have the means to do that? Many people will not be able to move from their homes to the district sent uh, 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 electoral offices or regional electoral offices to engage or participate in this. So must people be denied their right to exercise their franchise because they do not have the financial means to do that. So these are reasons that people are expecting the electoral commission. And I have no doubt in mind that the court will consider all these factors for the sanctity of our electoral process, for the fact that people should not be denied the opportunity to exercise their democratic and constitutional right in participating in the electoral process to determine who governs them at any point in time or who represents them in parliament or who represents them as assembly members in the various local assemblies that the court will take into consideration all of these factors but i would conclude on one simple statement and that statement is from the scripture from the holy quran and i do know that in several verses of the the, the bible same statements have been made Allah says in the Quran, that they plan and Allah plan, but Allah is the master of all plans. Every action of this electoral commission and this government is geared towards an agenda. Trust me, if it is destined, you will lose this election. You will lose the election. It doesn't matter the machinations, the strategic plan, and something that is absolutely unwarranted. I am very confident that it doesn't matter what the process. If people would have to walk, from distances and miles to get engaged in this activity, they will do so, so that at the end of the day in 2020, this incompetent government will be thrown out, because that is what they are so scared of. Grateful. Uh, 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 you, you, you can come in. I mean, he raised issues with the fact that uh, th this is the first time, uh, the issues about uh, injunction and all that. You can react now. Um, I think when I said the court, hmm. I never made mention of substantive issue or what. If, okay. it, if it's in, injunction, so if the court had no ruled in favor of the EC, the EC couldn't have, I mean, conducted the, the, the exercise today. So he shouldn't take words out of okay, my so mouth. And then it is not I'm coming, substantive issue. and I'm coming, right. what I'm saying is that even where we do elections, if we divide the elections into one million, and every household we are doing it, there will still be the presence of the police and the army. They were there as stakeholders. And it's a fact. All the elections that we, we, we've been doing, mm. most of the time or sometimes, there are pockets of antisocial behaviors. So we need security around. And two, using words such as EC is being reckless and cool, I think this is highly, highly unfair. And sometimes, if you don't have the requisite information, you display your ego trips. And out of that, <laughs> out of that, you use words that to me are not appropriate. Because if you say EC is reckless, you could say that you disagree with the EC. Because you are a very big man, with all respect. I'm not. And no, you are not somebody who's been MP before, a minister before, and you are a very good person. And you see, you're quoting Quran and Co. And I don't think Quran will say that use reckless for EC and Co. Quran will tell you that, oh, you can disagree. That's what Prophet Muhammad was teaching us. So I think uh, we are all trying to change. Let us position ourselves and we could have followers. My brother has a huge fellow, not only in the north. I know because we talk among people. I think I also have. And sometimes some of our followers will rather abuse. Maybe you are just using the words, you don't mean anything. But they will pick the word as a tool and abuse its uses and it leads to a lot of other things. I think so far as I'm concerned, people have moved to the regional offices. It was an exercise. And even district offices doing this. Of course, there will always be challenge. Anybody that wants to go and register, the person will go and indeed register. Some people move. No matter the distance. They will go and register. Okay. And I think if 
anything at all. The EC has also done its analysis, mm -hmm. and they think it wouldn't be a problem. You think the court would have probably ruled, I mean, on the on the on the on the injunction? Of course, the court would have stopped it because he said he has confidence in the in the court. So if you have confidence, as I also do, mm -hmm. and it's, it's a court of competent jurisdiction. So for them to rule and say that, hey, you can't put injunction means, it means you can go ahead and do the exercise. So let us give the EEC the needed support and make sure. And my brother said this incompetent government. I think words are easy to be used. But based on which parameters or what parameters, mm. we're talking about incompetent government. Nanado took over 2016. Let's be very honest and fair. Pick all parameters from primary macro indicators, secondary macro indicators, and compare them as of now. At least Nanado came, NHIS. You remember, if you Christian related hospitals stop taking NHIS, we were in the country 2016 because of billions of debt. I'm not saying we finished all the debt. Who paid them for them to come back? Teachers' allowances, nurses' allowances, the areas, yes, but we put them back and paying them. 2012 up to now, the NDC stopped employing nurses. How many of them have we employed up to now? Talk about interest rate. It was between 33 and 40. Now, you get interest rates 22%. Even Maslok. Interest rate per year was 24. 2% per month. Now, it's 12. 1% per month. If you can pay your child school fees, you say free SHS, it's not good. I am saying that there are still issues in Ghana. We had power outages for almost four years. When you talk, they say, oh, MPP never did anything. Go and check 20, the, the first statement by the finance minister, Honorable Dufour, in parliament, T1, T2, Asogli, all those things, that he read the MPP government almost finishing most of them. So what I'm saying is that you can't just say incompetent government, just like that. Because he knows what he's doing. He's just displaying intellectual dishonesty. He's not somebody who is dull. That one everybody knows. But he's trying to deceive the public. Yet he just quoted the Quran. I think the Bible also says that it is the son of the devil that keeps on lying. I'm not saying he is. But anything that has component integration of lies is related to the devil. The fact of the matter is the MPP and this, they are not perfect. But between the two, since Nana Adodanko took over this country, mm. Even Kofor's first two years, the only difference was the HIPEC that gave us some, I mean, substantive infrastructure within the first few years. But apart from that, Nanado's performance, check all of them. Any government within two years that has reduced taxes, nobody can be compared to Nanado. So I'm not saying Ghana is heavy. Okay. First time we are exporting food to Burkina Faso. I am into farming. My, my, my crops, I do miscropping. Cassava and plantain in Kawanda near Nkoko. They all got waste last year. Do you know why? Even for you to transport them by uh, uh, this tractor in Okada on uh, uh, tricycles mm. to the market centers were even more costly than the price of the planting because food was so much in abundance. It doesn't mean we don't have trouble. Why doesn't it reflect on the market if you go there? Food last year, oh please, they didn't buy plantain. Okay. I don't know early this year, but they didn't buy plantain. This is a fact. We won't come here and lie. The what prices, I'm saying is the that prices went down. last year, is, is, is plantain, it was even too, with all respect, too low that my food, my, my crops had to stay in there. Even now, if you, I can take you there, you see them, they are still there, the castle, everything. I'm not saying Ghana is okay. I'm not saying there is no hardship. But okay. two and a half years, against eight years of deplorable state of our country, you cannot, development is a process. You can let us do our have years, we'll change everything okay. in our country. Yeah. But I think okay. this government uh, is and much we can more move on. competent, far more competent than the NDC government <laughs> under His Excellency John Dramani Mama. People know, tell me any of the pro poor policies, <laughs> any of the pro poor policies mm. that is huge, that is remarkable, that is illustrious, that is so pictorial, tangible, that the NDC government be social democrats introduced and they have sustained it okay so how can you say we are incompetent let me get him to well, react and then we'll <laughs> <have> <laughs> i think we should clap for my brother thank for, you for acting look oh, i'm acting no, up, no oh, he has actually yeah this is unfair no i'm saying no, 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 we draw we draw before i start using acoitic and then acoitic on you just just withdraw anyway first and foremost why Oh, you didn't withdraw the acting, please do. You know oh. I don't like that. You are my brother. Okay. We, in fact, if it hurts you that much. No, it's not hurting me, but I want you to pick up a behavior that we can build up, cordial. My humble, and honor, my, brother. my humble and honorable brother, I have withdrawn Thank you very that much. acting. If I'm lying, bring and, your fingers. <laughs> <laughs> first, first and foremost, 
<laughs> it's amazing when I listen to him. He felt uncomfortable with the usage of the word incompetent. Interestingly, just less than three years ago, he used that word with alacrity, with impunity. We never had any problem at all with that. But well, clearly, that was reflective. Can, can I that was the truth. Can, can I finish? Can I finish? I beg you. Sorry, sorry. I First and foremost, he's talk talking sorry. about interest rate and others. I would want to quote His Excellency the President and the Vice President. Group war policies. Allowances. I would give you more than 10. Can I, can I finish? Mr. 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 Please allow him. Please allow him. Uh, please allow him. Uh, so allow him. Allow him. God bless him. Uh, uh, Clap for him. He said he's happy. Oh, I, I beg you. Okay, sorry, you just sorry. admonished that okay. we should allow this program to. <laughs> okay, I listen to you. I okay, beg you. I mean, it's amazing that they feel extremely uncomfortable. You remember the current <coughs> competent, in fact, super, super incompetent minister for a Greek when he had a problem with his constituent when he was described as incompetent. I mean, clearly, the, the, the Gombe says that if warm water can be taken as a meal in the night and you think that others should take it, you should be prepared to take that warm water. What is more incompetent? than infrastructure development that the NDC started, completed, and you are so incompetent you can't even commission. What is more incompetent than that? What is more incompetent than you even failing to honor your promises that you had? For which reason the people of this country gave you the mandate? He's talking about energy. Your vice president, the current, our vice president, himself admitted, that it was the NBC that solved Dumso. Yet you sit on oh. national. The vice president himself admitted. It's never true. It, can He's I, never can said I, can that. I you can call well, him. Well, I think he, he only said that, well, well since uh, the former <laughs> president caused it, there's no need to praise him for bringing for it, so to bringing an it an to an end. end. That, that so, what does it mean? So. This is not Latin. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. This is not Latin. See, yeah, As a matter of, no, this is not Latin. This is English. And this is not Dagbani, perhaps if you may not understand. He spoke the only, the only he thing spoke is English. that you have vocabulary limitation because he didn't say what he said. Can I finish? Thank you. You know, if we want this program to degenerate, but I, I would want to avoid that because you have been uh, exposed in a fantastic manner. Uh, but let me just point out. He's, so what is more incompetent than the rich hospital, than the Legon hospital who you put up that you are so incompetent that you can't commission? What is more incompetent than you failing to honor the obligations and the promises you made to the people of this country? What is more incompetent than the security decay that we have in this country? For which reason? Three young ladies of this nation can still not be found. And the minister, please. The, can, I, can I finish? Mr. Sivan Amma, uh, please allow him. him. That, please. Why are you doing this? You are really the national planet. Mr. Sivan Amma, please allow him. Someone will sue uh, you. Please, sue me. Yeah, uh, yes. Mr. Sivan Amma, please allow can, him. Can I finish? Okay. You have a minister for gender who went and met the family and told them that they would have their kids reunited very soon. How many months now? Over four months, I was on a program with one Talk of the facts, super facts, incompetent facts, communicators facts, facts. of your government. And he said that why should the family be worried about the fact that three months after the minister made that promise, they still can't find them. What is more incompetent than a CID boss who suddenly and interestingly has been promoted about three times within two years, came out without any you know, you know, force and told us that they knew where those abducted young ladies were, only for them to come out and inform us, please, only for them to come out and inform us that it was just to give them hope. So if you have a government that is seeking given hope without a scintilla of hope, what is more incompetent than that? You are talking about social intervention programs that the NDC. I would urge you to open your ears properly and listen to them. Except that you may not have an appreciation of what constitutes a social intervention project. The NDC government under President Mahama instructed that all his appointees indeed give 10% of their salaries to provide <laughs> health facilities for rural and deprived communities. Yeah, that is social intervention. The NDC government provided free school uniforms. For the private community, the other day I was with, once again, another incompetent communicator of this incompetent government. And he said that, oh, how many people? They were in tens of thousands. What is more incompetent than that? The NDC government didn't only stop that. The NDC government provided free sandals for schools. The NDC government provided, <laughs> let me tell you, provided free SHS for the private communities. Now, I am shocked that you are talking about restoring teacher trainee allowances and nurses trainee allowances with a quota in a country where we have nurses, nurses, 
you know, you know, citizens ratio, which is nothing to write home about. By the way, on the 24th of February 2017, under this super incompetent and super corrupt government, you had the Ghana Health uh, uh, Nurses and Midwifery Council, who held a press, uh, an annual conference in the president's own home region. And they stated that we have a deficit of 38,000 nurses in this country. If you do not appreciate that, the World Health Organization deficit of 38,000. Right. Now, how can you restore a nursing training allowances with a quota? And you know what it means? Nurses training Less, lesser nurses in this country when we already have a deficit of nurses in this country. Now, you came out with teacher trainee allowances, so-called restoration, with a quota in a country where you are implementing a free SHS, where you need trained teachers. I'm a trained teacher by profession. You need more trained teachers, yet you are given a quota that seeks to reduce the number of trained teachers that, that are supposed to man those institutions. So, my brother, your incompetency is legendary. There is no denying that fact. Now, you are talking about economic okay. indicators. So, how much so, was... How, please, how, how many nurses did you employ? Can I finish? Okay. From 20... Okay. Can I finish? Can I finish? Can I finish? You see, tell God you for see, me. Let's take some comments. Your desperation, desperation your refusal, your interjection <laughs> projects <laughs> clearly. Listen, you know what? Your inability... Your inability to listen, your inability, your inability to listen, and your needless interjection. Can I, can I, your, ina, your inability to listen, your, ina, you see, your inability to listen, your inability to listen, and the needless interjection exposes how how incompetent your government is, and exposes how you guys have lost. Can I, can I, can I wrap up, please? Can I, can I wrap up? Can I, please? 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 Wrap up so, and then we so take I'm some saying comments that, I'm saying that. You are talking about economic <laughs> How much was a gallon of petrol? But you see, the people of this country. Are, are, are you that Yes, the people yeah. of this country yeah. are not yeah. interested stop, stop, stop. as to how much is it. They stop. are interested in stop. how much was the gentleman who was moving from Medina to Accra. Yeah. Ministries yeah. looking yeah. for a job. How much was he paying for Trotto? And how okay. much is he paying now? How much is the dollar now? Your vice president told us okay. that, that when okay. the fundamentals of the economy are weak, the exchange rate will expose you. How much is it now? Okay. Because it's not just no, incompetence. Okay, no, I, I no, am incompetence is legendary. I am grateful. Is I said, let's take some comments and come back. Okay. Right, I'll talk Th this one is we'll, coming we'll have from to Malik move on. Adama. Yeah, we'll talk. And he <laughs> says, good morning, <laughs> TV3. The EC is making the registration very difficult for the new registers. He says, could you believe that three constituencies are gathering at one district to register, which has about 280,000 voters, and expected new uh, number of new voters uh, registers are about 10,000. With the greatest respect to their judges, I think they don't understand what the EC is about, and also they don't help Ghanaians. This one is from Adam Hardy uh, from Tamale. He says the exercise is supposed to be a preparation towards the conduct of district level elections. However, the various districts, it appears there's less publication and notification to create awareness to people. Good morning, TV3. Um, an MPP man, but I wish Honorable Mutala will be voted back to Parliament because his contribution is one of the best on radio and TV. If I have my way, I'll transfer my vote to, uh, to vote for him and vote for my party, the NPP. I wish him the best of luck. Suleiman Oto sends that one from Sekendi Zongo. Charles Nyame from Asaman Kese says, the limited registration exercise has begun and already the frustrations and disappointments have set in with the people raining insults at the EC. So I ask why this attempt to disenfranchise over 1 million Ghanaians, what's government afraid of? Because I thought they said they are delivering. Or, that's the question he's asking. Good morning, I'm Edmond Abacha. So, what about those who completed SHS without these, without these requirements, especially in the rural areas? What then is the right uh, way to vote for every citizen? Though the EC is an independent, not... Um, they are not autonomous because it is accountable to the citizen of Ghana. Alasan Mawana in Wa says, let us collaborate and give support to EC to this limited voter registration. The EC boss is a person with integrity and competence and might need everyone's support for free, fair and transparent exercise. Dr. Abedi from Kwadasu says, um, good morning, champion host. Thank God the Electoral Commission today began a limited voters registration exercise nationwide. But attention seekers uh, from uh, former 
but attention seeker former President Mahama should stop making noise since Ghana is safe and if he thinks he can't live with us, he should better go and enjoy his stay in Togo. Um, that is what he says. Uh, good morning, TV3. The NDC must allow the EC to operate during their tenure. What did they do? We are tired of them. Our lives are better under MPP than NDC. Abasi, I sent that one from Zebila. Uh, good morning, Bright. Um, we cannot run away from the fact that the integrity of the Electoral Commission is highly questionable. You remember the Ayawas West Wogon election? You had a chairperson who asserted that the election was fairly conducted. I wonder what the special prosecutor is doing about that. And based on the NPP style of governance in this country, it's absolutely a government of all wind and no piss. Um, that's what is shown from Borga Center. So those are some of the messages we we Grateful. Keep morning. the messages Very coming. Oh, no, 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 no. We are wrapping up. So let uh, Mr. Sumnamwa wrap up and then you, you, you wrap up for me. Okay, Mr. Sumnamwa. So we're wrapping up. We're hitting the top of the hour. Yeah, okay. Oh, all right. That's um, the incompetence. That's the incompetence okay. I just speak about. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, uh, please wrap up. Just, just one minute. Please right. wrap up. Yes. I Don't make it too long. No, no, yeah. I think mm. when we come here, we are talking. We should back our statement with facts and figures. Yeah. You said the agreed minister was incompetent. No, he is. Not that he was. Oh, he is no, oh, oh, come in. Please don't, don't interrupt. A Greek under NDC was growing 3%. <laughs> under this same incompetent a Greek minister, you are lying about, you are talking deceiving Ghanaians. Mm. It was growing, it's growing, sorry, 8.4%. In fact, he's rated the first and one of the best ministers under Nanado. So somebody that helped agree to be grown from 3% to 8.4. My honorable member here is saying that he's incompetent. And then he talked about nurses there not employed. I thought probably he could be asked under NDC. From 2012 up to now, how many nurses were employed? And even within two and a half years of Nanado, how many? Let's bring these figures. If what they have done or what they did is better. Okay. Be better. Mm -hmm. I will join the NDC. Oh, okay. Because, okay. Let me, let because answer, I'm coming. I'm coming. Oh, 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 he's wrapping up. Allow him to wrap up. What I'm trying to tell my brother is that if you talk of insecurity, when your regional chairman, in fact, the things of Oswampo for said, exactly are the things that are happening. They will sue you. Exactly. They we see the things you. he said in the tape. Sue me. Yes. About why is it that he's with the police? Well, well no, let they me. They will sue you. Let me just tell you. I think he said, allegedly, allegedly, what he said. The case is in court. Okay, but I'm saying that allegedly what he said. Oh, you are not Exactly. The description, the definition, the dimensions, the parameters he used. Check, they are the same thing. Like going to play football, <laughs> now, a coach is telling the players what to do. Left, do this, play center, right. And look at the modus of apprentice. Look at the critical activity path. Look at the entire value chain of this criminal activity and what we have heard allegedly in the tape by honor uh, uh, of Osampov. I think if you have been any developed country, you'd have been in chain by now. They would have jailed him by now. <laughs> so, <laughs> can you yes, no, so I, I remind you that the case is in court, so you, so, can, you can stay away say, from okay. the substance. But I, I'm, I'm suggesting that the women in Upper East, Upper West, Northern, Ashanti, Braham, Western, Greater Accra, Volta, all of them should come public mm. and demand that Honorable for some people and the NDC should really stop what they are doing because their kids' life now they can't go to school free. Okay, because I'm the NDC is right. Please wrap up for me. Right. First of all, how can NDC first, do that? Right. Just because of power, you want to kidnap can, people. Can also, because of power, me. you want to kill can people. Can but not fair. Please allow right. him to also wrap up. Right. Right. right, first of all, it's not fair. First of all, it's not fair. You see, it's not fair. We are living in a time where there is that humble distrust. The citizens have for politicians. No, for NDC. That they that are with, can, just, can I finish? Define it. Don't, don't don't seven 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 please seven. allow yes. him you just to wrap told me that. Okay. So do we get out of this? Yeah. I'm saying that we live in a time where there is that deep-seated and inbuilt distrust citizens have for politicians. For NDC. Mm. So they are waiting for a little opportunity for them to say that here they go. You don't sit on national television and peddle falsehood when the facts can easily be checked. In 2014, NDC employed 24,114 nurses. That you must go and check. And in fact, in 2016, the Minister of Finance had actually cleared 100,000 nurses to be taken. For you to sit on national television. 2016. Sure. 100, oh, sure. please, please. Sure. Can, I, you employ them? can I finish? You employ them? Can I finish? Uh, how I can, beg you. How I, can you use this? I've as, given as you a initial. figure that we employed in 2014, uh -huh. 24,114. Which segment of the nurses? 
Are you not acting up? Now we have not We have certificate. We have diploma. We have diploma. You know what? Can I? I'll still make. I'll still make. I'll still make. I'll still make my points anyway. I mean, you see, when they get exposed, that's you see, the NPP and their apparatchiks have what I call a bis, you know, a Bismarckian sense of of ownership to falsehood. And that is precisely yeah. what my brother is engaged when, in. Because when, when you are displaying your ego trips and I, unconscious incompetence, oh, thank you are you. saying that oh, we are. Thank you, I'll still make my points in. I, I realize you're uncomfortable. <laughs> they have a Bismarckian sense of <laughs> ownership to yeah, falsehood. And that is why he is peddling that on this <laughs> program. Now, listen to him. And he's talking about what the MPP did and what the NDC couldn't do. The minister you talk about, a Greek, and I thought you would have been aware that lumbing was part of the so-called figures that you are talking about. What was part? Every policy of any government is not just about the fancies or fantasies of it. How does it reflect in the ordinary Ghanaian? I'm a farmer Man's myself. Food was Please, cheap. I'm a farmer. And throughout the NDC reign, we never bought a bag of rice in the, in the you know, lean season at 100 Ghana. Oh. Last season, I sold a bag of rice. No, it's not true. In, why? 160 grams. You cheated somebody. Please, it was sold in the market. I was buying it Can I finish? Can I? I was buying it. I was buying it. I was buying it. Oh, you see, come and make your you point see, and wrap up. You cheated the top of the list and cheated them. Oh, please. You cheated the top of the list. First and foremost, I cheated the top of the list. I sold it in Ghana. No, no, because they came here to buy. I was buying my 70. How come you are selling yours for 100? First and foremost, that is another You have to be arrested. Okay, so you sold yours for 70. First and foremost, you sold it for 100. Please, you have, have, you have the same thing. You have, oh, so he has to be arrested. He has to be arrested. Okay. You have, you have the, okay. you have the spiritual okay. leader. Okay. You have the you have the How could you have the How could you have the spiritual leader? This is not You have the spiritual leader to the president. You have the spiritual leader, Reverend Osu Bempa. The president himself described him as his spiritual advisor. He said he knew where those girls are. He said it. Ah, you have the well, CID, please. You have the CID <laughs> boss. Yeah, the confused, please, the confused, CID boss says confused. that. We know where the girls are. Now, I am talking about the... NDC oh, must produce the girls. Oh, oh, NDC is am, fully you see, responsible. You, see, you, you see, are responsible. You have been exposed in a no, legendary No, you know you are fashion. responsible. Well, you and have been exposed in a legendary fashion guys on this program. You and I would you. advise you, anytime you want to sit on a program, get your facts very well. Oh, you know, 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 you